technology is the most powerful change in the world of education. Welcome to the video interview series Augmented Reality Based Technology in the Classroom, delivered to you by Clever Books Company. Hello, listeners. Hello, our readers. Uh, we have our podcast interview, Augmented Reality Based Technology in Education. Today, I have a guest, uh, Dr. Peter Hughes, who is going to be with us today. Hi, Hello. Ina. Thank Hello. you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Yes, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I'll be glad to hear your opinion on immersive technologies in education, uh, your professional experience of using augmented reality, and also uh, probably you can share opinion of benefits that it has for kids' learning. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really thrilled to be speaking to this topic. It's something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, currently, I am the director of curriculum for Mount Olive Schools. Um, we have about 4,600 students. And I look at augmented reality and virtual reality as a tool that they should be exposed to. Um, so it's something we've been, we've been exploring and using for the past few, few years, actually. Okay, well, that's fantastic. Um, can you tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself and about your background? Absolutely. Um, I started out my teaching career as a high school biology teacher, and I taught middle school, high school. I was a vice principal of a high school, became a principal of middle schools, and now I work as a director of curriculum, which means I'm in charge of everything that the kids learn from kindergarten through 12th grade. So it's quite an interesting job. Um, and I see my job as kind of preparing kids for the future. I'm about to start also as a superintendent in Hallworth Schools. So I'm actually really excited. Um, Congratulations. To yeah, it's wonderful. It's going to be a great job. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah, and I've done my undergrad in biology, my master's in science education, and I got my doctorate in educational leadership. So those are some of my highlights. Um, but technology has always been a passion of mine, and it's always been something that I really have believed in as a great medium for getting our students to that next level. Absolutely. And can you tell me a little bit more about the use of augmented reality technology? We did have a brief conversation before, and I'd really like to you know, come back to topics we did speak about and uh, bring it back to this recording. So how did you initially uh, came across augmented reality? And maybe you can share also what you have done with it um, in the classroom. Sure. Um, our first exposure to augmented reality was really um, I was researching some of the AR, VR platforms that exist, and I wound up purchasing some um, index, some cards that are meant for little children. And um, basically, you hold an iPad app up to it, and the card might be of a zebra, and the zebra comes alive right on the card. And then you could pull out a card that's the grass, and the zebra will walk up to and eat the grass. It's such an amazing thing to see um, that immediately my mind was just blown. My mind went to the million ways that this could be a miraculous tool for learning. Um, recently, I also saw uh, cards that were created where they were the elements of chemistry. And as the cards came closer, they would create covalent bonds. And if you brought them apart, they would break apart again. And it's, it's just really amazing to see this interactive nature that can happen. I look forward to seeing kind of the textbooks start to um, bring these in and augmented reality become more and more um, a, a systemic part of our world. I think it's coming. So those are some of the pieces. Um, and we also have uh, nights where we have students that do STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. And they've actually worked with uh, augmented reality coloring books which I think is fantastic. The kids color a picture and then it comes to life through the, through the um, iPads. So those are some of the exposures. We've also played with, uh, with Google Expeditions VR, AR, um, and that's kind of interesting. I think that it has a lot of growth to come. Um, I think that it's going to evolve quickly. And I think with the cheaper headsets now um, that you'll be able to see VR, really expand exponentially in the classroom. So. Okay. 
Fantastic. And you said you did use uh, some of the augmented reality applications and uh, technology. Uh, in which grades did you apply that? Was it more for primary school or for secondary school students as well? So right now it's more of an exposure phase, like I'm getting kids to see it. So everything from kindergarten through to um, middle school students have been exposed to it at this point. Uh, my kindergartners have already used it as a tool for learning, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and my middle school students are looking at kind of the possibilities with it and exploring those. So it's something that we've, we've kind of integrated um, by myself and by just creating the exposure to the opportunity. We haven't systemically pushed it into the curriculum yet, mm -hmm. but that's coming. I think okay. as the tools e evolve, it will become more and more systemic. Okay. So, and how di did the kids perceive uh, all these uh, learning uh, tools? What was their reaction first when you introduced augmented reality to the classroom? So I sent you a video, and it just kind of shows like the excitement that both parents and the kids have when they first discover this. It's mm -hmm. a little video of just a, a, a girl coloring a sheet of paper in, in um, an app and then watching it pop to life and the mom's there, she's trying to figure it out. It, it makes us wonder how this technology works. It makes us wonder how we can use this technology. And right now at the exposure stage, when people are just starting to see how it can be used, we are not even, we're, we're far away from the possibilities of where this will go. I think that this will evolve over time. So to watch the discovery and just the eyes pop open and, and the excitement is a miraculous thing. Um, from a, an educator standpoint, I love the idea that our kids can see something three-dimensionally in front of them. And they can actually explore every angle of that, of that thing, whether it's, whether it's a graph in geometry or if they're exploring the structure of a space station. It's, it's a very interesting and engaging tool that is more than just um, exciting to see for the first time. It can be a tool that's integrated throughout curriculum. Absolutely. And what do you think are the major benefits of implementing augmented reality in education? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> Maybe name two or three uh, that you think are really the ones that uh, can help the kids uh, in their learning journey. Okay. I think the, the main benefit is to be able to see things three-dimensionally that are impactful. So if I'm looking at geometry, geometry on a flat page in a textbook doesn't come to life. But if I can actually take that graph and put it into a three-dimensional space and then manipulate it, actually move it, change it, look from different angles, see it from this angle, bisect it with a line, it changes the discovery learning. Instead of them just uh, consuming the two-dimensional image, they now can manipulate a three-dimensional image in real time and look around the corner. They can see it. It depends on how many pr points of perspective they have. So that's one way that I think it's really impactful. Number two um, is really when we get to the point where we're able to interact with the three-dimensional elements, that's where it's even more powerful. When I can virtually dissect a frog in front of me, right? Without Absolutely. harming a frog, without, and, and you can actually take the liver out and look at it over here as you're looking at the heart here and you're able to see how it goes together and it maybe even in the three-dimensional model, put it back together. Um, that's a different level of learning and that actually will save districts money that will cut back on costs, but it's still, like an experiential learning that you can't replicate unless kids are actually taking a frog apart. And in fact, about taking the frog apart, it also will help some kids to actually go through ac this activity because many uh, can't. And I know right. that some kids have to take their time away from this class because they simply can't take it. Yeah, and, and some students have a belief not to do it as well. And it right. cuts through all of that. Because dissecting a virtual frog in front of you can be the same learning, but it doesn't have the same problems associated with it. Um, ethical Absolutely. dilemmas, if you will. Yeah. So it's just, it's, those are the two huge advantages I see in it. 
Um, plus, it's really engaging. I think that once you see kids engaging in this medium, um, they get excited. They, they see the possibility. And ultimately, their future industries might be contingent upon these skills. So I think that all of those reasons make it, make it a worthwhile um, avenue to pursue. Cannot agree more with what, with what you said. And in terms of the teachers, how do they perceive this uh, technology? Uh, for example, in your school, are there teachers, some teachers reluctant to use augmented reality in the classroom or are many actually happy to and dive in directly and try to take it and uh, use it? You always get um, those, those really early adopters that are like gung-ho, that they'll do it right away. And you always get those people who are a little bit more reluctant. And I think that right now, they're still at the exposure stage. They're still trying to find out what the tools are capable of doing so that they can use the best tool to, to teach the students. Um, to a certain degree, though, that trepidation, that... Um, that nervousness that teachers have, um, I try to cut through it by simply putting the tools in the hands of the kids because the teachers don't have to be the experts. In mm -hmm. fact, most of the time, the, the teachers are learning from the students when it comes to technology, and that's really okay. I think it's important to verbalize that and vocalize that and say, listen, use this tool. You don't need to be an expert. Just give it to your kids. Give them a project that requires the tool and the students will learn the tool. And I think once you do that, once you release that control of trying to dictate to your students how they should learn and you just give them the ability to use the tools to learn themselves, they do. They will rise to the occasion. So I've seen, I've seen tremendous things where um, last year we got, we had uh, eight, no, 10 systems of Oculus Rift installed for our camp, right? Mm -hmm. The teachers had never seen them, never played with them. And it was the day before camp that we finally got everything working. Within three days, our kids were on their own because the teachers had no choice but to just give it to the kids right. to explore and figure out. And the kids designed the activities. And of course, they were game-based and they were, you know, um, trying to find their ways around mazes and shoot robots, but it was an exposure that the kids had and the kids became the teachers. And isn't that a beautiful thing? Absolutely. So they, uh, they create now, not just they absorb. And this is the best thing because that's when you learn, right? Right. I think so. Um, I think ultimately where I want to get this to is where my students are the ones creating the digital content. And right now it's very limited, but I think back to when we first did web design. Mm -hmm. When we had web design, um, you had to first know HTML and you had to kind of design websites if you were going to get your message out. But then all of a sudden, HTML no longer was relevant because you had HTML editors that did it for you. And kids could create their own websites. And then you had social media that, that existed and messages could go everywhere. Well, I think that virtual reality and augmented reality will be the same. I think right now it's tough for students to create in virtual and augmented reality, but I think that the tools will get better and better so that it's much easier for them too. You did talk about uh, at last time uh, where about all these stages that are happening. First, yeah. uh, kids have to see how it's done in terms of the preset pre scenarios with augmented reality. And then they learn about the technology itself. Then they try to uh, use the uh, creative uh, ideas right. with using or uh, creating augmented reality on their own. But you, as you said, the goal is that they actually will become the creators at the end of the day of all this uh, technology that other people can use in business or uh, anywhere else. And the reason I think that's so important is because I'm looking at future industries. And I sent um, a report from Goldman Sachs that tried to predict how much money these industries will be worth. Conservatively, they said $80 billion by 2025. Hmm. And the higher end is $180 billion. So I want my students 
to be the designers, the creators, the innovators inside of augmented reality and virtual reality. I want them to be the ones that actually have the ability to create the content because I think that that's where the money and the jobs will be for the future. So as a director of curriculum, I'm trying to think of what is going to make my students the most successful for our community, for our country, um, for the world. And I think that augmented and virtual reality is one of these technologies um, that is going to have huge implications in um, education, in the real estate market, in, um, in art and design, in um, manufacturing, in, in almost every industry, AR and VR will play a part, I believe. And I think that that's coming. Absolutely. And it's great that you do have this vision. Uh, so the kids actually do study according to the 21st century demands. Right. It's a question of what's going to be important in their lives, not what American life should have been 100 years ago, but what it will become. I think that that's the key. Um, sometimes we teach kids skills that are no longer relevant. And I always look to re-envision and, and find the things that I think are going to be relevant in the future. It's actually, it's interesting. Uh, I was presenting in Abu Dhabi last week and we we're talking about the future jobs. Mm -hmm. And we did have a slide that people were laughing at because <laughs> the title was future jobs, but the slide was empty. Because oh, we don't right. know which job <laughs> will be there in 10 or 20 years. And we made it so um, exciting for them, you know, to, to, to see what the jobs will be. And we said we've done a lot of research. And then we, they saw an empty slide. There was a silence for about a minute until they actually got the point. And this is how it was about 15, 20 years. If you ask about iOS or Android developer a job, a job title, no one would right. ever know what that is. <laughs> right that's true that's that's brilliant actually that's a great way of making your point we don't know the future we have to somehow predict what we think will be relevant what i can tell you is education will not look the same 20 years from now the skills that our kids need are very different today than they were 20 years ago for example if i ask my iphone what the capital is of Ethiopia. It will not only give me the capital name, it will give me the statistics of the population. I will see the major events that occurred there. I will see every famous person who's ever, there's no need to memorize anymore. Mm. This has killed the need to memorize. So when I look at just that change, that was a shift. The mm. fact that everybody has a computer in their pocket Absolutely. that is connected to this world of information called the internet. Mm -hmm. Well, the next evolution is going to be AR. When you look around you on, on a city street in New York and all of a sudden you see Zagat ratings for the restaurants up and down the street where you see, don't walk here, there's a manhole cover open and it's all in AR. Mm -hmm. That can be the future that we're talking about. Um, and I think that that will come eventually. Once you merge, um, right now, everything is kind of virtual, mm -hmm. but once you make that change into like a, an augmented reality world, you'll see artwork that's now um, moving on a cityscape. Um, that's, that's something that, uh, that Facebook recently did. They mm -hmm. created the first virtual artwork, um, and you had to have the goggles on to see it. But things like that will come. Um, they're down the line, but it's just, it's fascinating to me. And I love to, to look at the future and, and kind of think about what my kids can do to help impact that. Absolutely. So. And uh, if we come back to uh, using augmented reality in educational purpose, what do you think maybe two or three skills that uh, AR does help the kids with? Okay. First of all, it is no matter which program you go into, you have to figure out the controls, the way that you manipulate that world. That is problem solving. Um, it's problem solving that doesn't come, like you can't read an instruction manual, you just have to do it. It's learning by doing. Um, that's the first thing that I think I would highlight. 
Um, another skill is really, um, well, it's not so much a skill. It actually transports kids mm. into places where they couldn't be otherwise. For example, if I can take my kids and make them feel like they're on a space shuttle rather than in a classroom in Mount Olive, New Jersey, and I make that experience more authentic, I increase their interest level and I engage them in higher levels of learning because of it. Um, I think that that's, that's the power as well. Um, it can transport students and it doesn't matter whether they're rich, poor, whether they're in India or in the United States, it's the software and the hardware once it's accessible that can change the experience of the students and tear down those four classroom walls. Um, the other pieces I really like, I think it's got a future in doing what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Right now we're collaborating with a, an ocean between us, right? You're in Germany That's and I'm in the United States talking in real time in an interview. And I think that it will be even more impactful when, for example, I can see you in front of me in AR and I can feel like I'm in the studio in augmented reality. I think it's going to tear down boundaries, I think, between cultures to a certain degree. And that's coming as well. So there's a lot to look forward to in augmented and virtual reality. And I think that the more I contemplate the possibilities, the more excited I get. No, it's, it's absolutely, you're absolutely right in this case. And uh, it does bring a new way of learning and interacting and the opportunities that they're there. Right, it absolutely does. So I'm looking forward to the future. And now that the headsets and some of the different tools are becoming more and more affordable, I think it's going to ha also help with equity um, mm -hmm. in our world. I think the fact that um, as people get online, they're able to access this information at their fingertips. Mm -hmm. Well, the augmented and virtual worlds will be the same. I think that as, as the cost of these devices come down, mm -hmm. there's going to be more and more influence, um, even in third world nations, where people can use these tools and there's a more democratic access to them. It was actually my next question. Uh, maybe oh. you can also help me understand uh, what actually influences the decision of uh, leaders, the school leaders, to bring immersive technologies like augmented and virtual reality to school. I think they need to first be exposed to it, mm. and they need to see the the relevance of it in their kids' lives. Um, I think in the United States we have local control in New Jersey, so every town has its own leaders. Um, whereas in other, other states, it's countywide. So you'll have a hundred schools that are in control. So I think that we need to see the um, national agenda that puts this forward, but also you need um, exemplars of leaders that are implementing this in their districts mm -hmm. and showing value in it. Um, and it's tough. And here's why it's tough we're in the age of accountability in New Jersey. Like the question is, should we raise our test scores by three points mm -hmm. or should we in, put in something that's virtual reality, augmented reality? That's an interesting question. Or by inputting this, do we do that as well? Mm -hmm. So leaders are always struggling with this issue of okay. where should the priorities be especially when we have high stakes testing here in the United States where people's jobs are, are on the line or they're being evaluated based on how children perform. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a tough area to be in. Um, innovation, I think, is often hindered by fear. And when you have a system of fear in place, which is this high stakes testing, um, it sometimes holds people back from taking chances. I'm hoping that people take more chances because I think that our, our economy is contingent upon it. Um, when you look at what's made us successful as a country, it's always been our innovation and our ability to kind of think outside of the box. I want my kids to be the designers, creators, and makers of tomorrow. I don't want them to have to, um, to have to only know certain skills that are no longer relevant and no longer should be emphasized. 
Absolutely. Uh, probably one of my last questions. Uh, if we talk about uh, your suggestions uh, to teachers or to educational leaders who are out there who haven't tried to use augmented reality for educational purposes yet, what would you suggest them? Get a device and play. Play is the best way to be exposed to it. And then put it into a student's hands and step out of the way they will make you a believer. So, for example, um, we fear the things we haven't been exposed to and we fear the things we don't know. With augmented reality and virtual reality, oh my God, this seems so complex. How would we ever get out of the way of the kids? Just put it in their hands and see the learning that happens. Mm -hmm. And look at it open-mindedly. They may be playing a game that game is exposing them to problem solving about how to manipulate a virtual environment. There is problem solving even in the games. Um, and eventually the educational components are going to continue to increase and it's going to become a much more necessary tool. Uh, I think that that's what I would say. Put it in your kids' hands and get out of the way. So that's what Sounds I would say. great. Yeah. <laughs> but but. Let them lead. Yes, let them lead. Let them, let them be the leaders of the technology because they were born with iPads in their hands, practically. You know, I didn't see a computer until I was in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been working with computers that are much more powerful than the most powerful computers back then mm -hmm. since they were in kindergarten. So give them the chance and get out of their way and look for them to teach you how to integrate the technology because you will learn from them. And I think it was you who told me last time that uh, the kids are digital natives. Yes. And we are the digital immigrants. <laughs> I that really like absolute, that. <laughs> yeah, it's not mine. I mean, that was, that's a long time ago that yes. someone came up with that. But that's absolutely true. I mean, when we, when we were introduced to the, to the digital world, we were older, you know, they were born into it. Um, they had they had cameras on them when they were in their crib for, you know, I mean, my goodness, like, <laughs> it's just a di different world. Nowadays, some of them don't even have to carry keys to get into their house. They just put their finger up to Absolutely. the door and it opens. Very different world. Very different world than what we grew up in. So we need to think of education differently because we're not preparing um, for the world that we grew up in. We're preparing for a world that we can only try predicting. Um, we haven't seen it yet. Um, and that's what we need our kids to be able to adapt to. So. Absolutely. And you're absolutely right that so the change in education has to happen. The immersive te technology has to come to classrooms and uh, enable the kids to be exposed to them, to use them, and uh, to create with them. Well, it will, and it's only a question of whether you'll be at the beginning of that trend or yeah. at the end of the trend. And I think that I'd rather have my kids at the beginning. So That sounds good. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Hughes. It was it a pleasure was to pleasure. having you. And is there anything else that uh, you wanted to say that we haven't covered in this interview yet? Just thank you very much for the opportunity, and I'm hopeful that more school leaders and district leaders will get involved in this movement um, and help put VR and AR in the hands of every kid. So thank you. Just go and try it, as you said. Go and try it and get out of their way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you very much for being with us today, and it's been a pleasure, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you. You too. Everything changes.